My name is Ilecia Markus and I'm Honda and Fisherman. My father is Honda and Fisherman too. I had to in the city of 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 Ultimate <laughs> She the kids yet now and now and now they show up. I done fishing in many days, so I feel sad or mad. She needs me, sir. We all to meet this time. If if I if I shall be happy. Shall I fish? Because you should not be eating him.
I'm Louise and I'm a teacher in Greenland. I've been working here for one year, um, teaching Danish and English and art. I finished um, university just before I got here. So first real teaching job. I guess it will be challenging everywhere you go teaching, but I thought the language barrier would be less. I have kids in my classroom that doesn't speak Danish at all. So that's definitely a challenge when you don't have the same language and you have to teach them. In uh, university you are prepared for teaching kids with a, a second language, so we apply a lot of that. But the whole problem of not having the same cultural background and the same historical awareness uh, are definitely creating some issues and it makes it difficult to be on the same page because the students are from a different reality than what I'm from. So I always have to um, try to change my point of view and try to see it from their point of view and to try to understand their culture and also their um, social background because I think the social background is actually the biggest influence on their school. We have a lot of social problems, um, especially in my class I have kids from various of backgrounds, like they're from um, orphanage homes and some of them are from families with alcohol problems. I know there are some uh, kids who have been sexually abused and stuff like that and there is no doubt that it's influencing the kids um, in their way of behaving. The dropout is enormous, like 64% uh, doesn't even finish public school. <laughs> In the beginning it was a struggle every day to get the kids to do as much as I thought they were supposed to. And it was um, really hard because every day you, you felt like you were this angry person who had to be angry to reach the goals that I had set for the class. And then I realized that I just had to stop being that person because it was too hard to uh, pull through with that every day. So now it can seem like a chaotic world when you enter the classroom here. But I have made peace with it and I'm trying to uh, navigate through the chaos. <laughs> I learn every day. I think the students are teaching me more than I'm teaching them.
my full name is Mike Philip Thinker Thompson, but uh, I've re really never been called Mike. Here they say Mickey. It's a shortened version of Mickey Sok, which means the little one. I'm a educated actor and also a musician. I've been working with music uh, since I was uh, a teenager. I've always been singing and I'm, uh, I'm a singer. I've always um, been very um, attracted by art in, in many ways. I have always been like um, pretty good at uh, moving my body, so uh, it, it hasn't been very uh, difficult for me to learn things that I was interested in. I've been doing acting since 2005, that's nine years, and uh, I managed to uh, uh, work for the, this professional theatre in uh, eight years, actually. The most important thing is to uh, be, uh, to have your freedom of ex expression. I've never really had any problem with uh, standing in front of uh, an audience and uh, be entertaining. <coughs> of course, the biggest inspiration has to be my uh, feelings for my country. Like, that is what gives me uh, the energy and the courage to, uh, to do art. Of course, I get very, very proud of uh, the ones that uh, lived here before us in, uh, in thousands of years. The Inuit areas have been, uh, been populated, not always in Greenland, but in Canada, Alaska, and some people come to Greenland and they go away for a while and then somebody else comes again. And they have been uh, creating this uh, culture in all these years. And you all, I always feel so um, rich and also uh, proud that, uh, that these very few people have been uh, able to create such a unique thing. The drum is called Qidat. Qidat, you use it and you drum and you can chant and maybe in your chanting and drumming you can get into that state of mind that you get in trance and reach Qidak. Qidat, Qidak. Nowadays uh, the Christian uh, culture have taken the word Qidak and say that Qidek is heaven, which is something that you reach when you die. Qidek, in our culture, is, uh, is like a, a state of, uh, of mind that you uh, reach when you can combine your body, your soul and mind.
so we can enjoy uh, heaven here now instead of waiting to die and we don't know what happens when we die yeah <laughs> There's like a kind of a Western revolution right now going on in this country. We can't do so much about it, but we can, of course, uh, be careful that uh, we don't become another people. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> My name is Maya Olsen. I uh, am a biologist. I work in the Grenlandic Institute of Natural Resources in Nuuk. I actually decided that I wanted to be a biologist when I was five. <laughs> I read a book about some animals and I just decided that I wanted to work with animals. I work for a program called Nook Basic and Nook Basic is uh, climate monitoring program. We measure a number of things, mainly on vegetation. If we start to see climate change, then we can see how the different animals and, and vegetation types respond to the change. There's an amazing amount of opportunities to do really interesting field work in Greenland and like you see in Copperfield today, it's only 40 minutes by boat and then I'm in my other office. And you know, I get to go home and go on the internet and uh, drink my cappuccinos. And then on Monday morning, I go back to Copperfield and collect my data and look at my flowers. Nature is a very big part of our identity. We live in the middle of it, <laughs> you know, it's, uh, it's just 10 minutes away. Normally, just you can walk 10, 15 minutes and you're in the middle of, of nature. You know, you look out and you see massive ocean and there's icebergs flowing by, floating by and there's every once in a while you see a whale or You'll be walking by and there's an eagle flying over your head and in the winter it's just standing outside looking at the stars and northern lights. And it's, it's raw in a different way than like I lived in Copenhagen for 
long time and living in Greenland just feels more raw. There's not a lot of buffer between you and, and the wild. Even though uh, Nook is very modernized compared to many other cities, it's, there's still that feeling of nature being so close by. That's missing when you live someplace else. That's normally the thing people miss, is the openness. I'm not a very um, spiritual person, but um, growing up in Greenland and, and, and growing up in this culture, there's some things that will affect me. Even though I'm supposed to be this scientist that only looks at raw data and has nothing to do with the spiritual stuff, of course there's stuff that will move me even though it's hard to say why.